Hello, my darlings. Welcome to Five Steps to Discover Your Natural Creativity. If you think you're not creative, this is the place for you. And I'm going to tell you to think again. I'm going to talk you through a really good method of helping you get in touch with your creativity, which is natural to you. And I'll explain that in a bit. And how to really break through those walls and get going. So we all know that creativity is quite an amazing self-care tool, but we don't use it. We tend to think, oh God, I'm not an artist. Oh God, I'm not creative. So I'm going to show you differently. So who am I? I'm Jenny. I describe myself as the mad scientist of mixed media because I just play around with things. I like experimenting. Occasionally, I can be a creative genius. Other times, I just make a mess. And I'm a coffee addict. I am fueled by caffeine. So, yeah, what else can I say? So, welcome to this journey. I have been on this journey, and this whole presentation is based on what I've done in my time, really, and how I've adapted to go from a very, very timid creative to somebody who's willing to share. And you don't have to share. So you're, you're a step ahead there already. You don't have to worry about that. Now, I'm going to start with a quote by one of my favorite creative people, and that is Elizabeth Gil Gilbert. So if you are alive, you're a creative person. There is no justification. There is no sort of requirement to be creative it's not like you have to go to art school or you have to be good at something you are creative naturally and the secret is to find a creative outlet that works for you now that could be photography that could be sewing that could be painting that could be writing um, creativity is not just um, painting it's so much more than that it's a, it's an end-to-end -end process really and that process takes you through that crappy first draft that crappy first sketch through inspiration to a finished piece creativity is not the end product creativity is the process and it's finding that outlet that really speaks to you so i've in my time, narrowed it down to the five P's of creativity. To, so to really get in touch with your inner creative and work with it, you need to go through these five steps. And I use these even now um, to just get myself on track and get myself moving. So the five P's are perfection, procrastination, permission, practice, and play. So we're going to talk through each of these in their entirety. and. I'll explain why they're so important and how they lead you in to becoming more creative and really embracing your natural creativity. So the first thing is perfection, the enemy of creativity. It's very much a case of we have an ingrained belief in our society that anything less than perfect is not good enough. It's unworthy and less. So it's one of these very liberating things to let go of that perfection and giving yourself permission to get it wrong is very liberating accepting enjoying the process enjoying the process of writing those ideas out of just messing around with those poster paints of just randomly putting stitches in a um, piece of fabric rather than reaching out for the heights of perfection let yourself get it wrong. Let yourself go with the flow. Let yourself enjoy the process rather than focusing on the end product. Because that focus on the end product trips us into thinking it's got to be perfect, that each step has to look good, and it doesn't. If you've seen any of my art videos or any of my work, you'll see there's always an ugly phase. Now, a lot of people get to that ugly phase and go, oh crap, it's no good, and stop. But you need to go beyond that, which is why I'm talking about this being a process. And when you start thinking in terms of, right, I'm going to add some blue to this. Actually, I fancy some pink rather than, oh, my goodness, it's not like the picture in my head, like the end picture in my head. At that point, 
you start to create with abundance. It makes your life so much easier. So step two is all about procrastination. Finding the root of your procrastination and then knocking the bugger out. Okay. Um, I procrastinate. I have been termed a queen procrastinator in my time. And the thing is, I procrastinate not because I don't want to do something, but because I'm scared that my result won't be good enough. Okay. So perfectionism and procrastination are often heavily linked. And this is why knowing why you're procrastinating can be so important. Um, for me, like I say, my current one, I'm supposed to be filming an, a video series. I'm currently procrastinating about that because I'm frightened by it. I'm frightened of getting it wrong, of not doing it justice. And it's all about my own expectations of it. Now, I'm going to work that out. I know why I'm procrastinating. Some people procrastinate because they feel guilty for indulging in themselves. You know, creative time is selfish. Self-care is selfish. It's not actually. It's essential. You know, the housework will always be there. And in my case, once I've cleared up, yeah, great. But I'm still going to have to cook dinner. The house is still going to get messy again. So I can buy into this never-ending cycle of there's always something to do. Or I can take a break. And actually go and do something that feeds my soul rather than feeding everybody else's soul. Because, you know, my husband isn't going to die if the dishes aren't done one day. Um, the world isn't going to end if I haven't done the vacuuming. Taking time for me, however, the world will end if I don't do that because I will eventually just break down and crack up completely. So figure out why you're procrastinating and Try and break through it. Find different techniques. You know, I used to have to turn around to myself and actually book time in my diary to create because otherwise I wouldn't do it. I would spend the time doing things like the housework, um, doing the washing. So book time in with yourself and enjoy it. So number three, give yourself permission. Um, in society, we are always told to ask for permission. You know, we were always trained to gain validation, to seek permission from an early age. And, you know, we get a good feeling when we feel validated by other people. It's nice. But because we crave that validation, when we grow up, we still crave that validation from other people. So who do you ask for permission when you're growing up? You know, I... I don't anymore, actually, to be honest, but I used to ask permission almost. Like, I'd have my parents or my grandparents sitting on my shoulder going, oh, no, no, you can't do it that way. Oh, no, no, you can't do it that way. And that's the thing. We have these inner voices that tell us we can't do something that give us that validation almost. You are allowed to give yourself validation. You are allowed to actively turn around to yourself and go, yes. I have permission to do, 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 you can give yourself permission. You can even get a piece of paper and write down a permission slip and sign it. You're allowed to give yourself permission as an adult. You know, you're no longer in those constraints of needing to be managed and molded. If you want to go and do it, go and do it. That is your decision to make. Don't just shy away and go, oh no, grandma wouldn't like me to do it, so I'm not going to do it. Go out and do it. Enjoy yourself. It's your turn to give yourself permission. So say yes and invest in you. That's kind of the big bit for me is it's all about investing in yourself. If you are happy and healthy, you're setting that example to your children. If you're always rushing around like an idiot, you're setting that example for your children. So take a step back and think about what you're actually teaching them. Enjoy yourself. Give yourself permission to have some time out. You know, it's healthy for you and it's healthy for your kids. So we have talked about embracing imperfections and this is where we're going to sort of move on to the actual practicalities of creativity. So we've talked about embracing imperfections, beating procrastination and giving yourself permission. These are the mental steps to getting creative. The next ones are, like I say, very practical. So the next one is practice. 
Now, I'm not talking about repetition. I don't mean sitting down and drawing faces every single day for 20 hours. I'm talking about making space for creativity and repeating it regularly. So if you remember, I said earlier that I had to put creativity in my diary. I actually had to block book creative time for myself. That's okay. And that was block booked in every single day. Um, initially, when I started off, I think I did it every week. Um, then it got every couple of days, that kind of thing. And what I would do within those sessions was different. But it was the regular repetition of having that time for myself to practice, to play. It doesn't matter whether you're drawing, writing, painting. Whatever your media is, you need to practice. So rather than going, right, I'm going to draw faces until I'm good at them, switch up the topic and the subjects. So take a walk with your camera and look for pretty flowers. And then the next day, go out and see what wildlife you can find. Then the next day, maybe go looking for textures. Keep practicing. But by switching up the topic or the subject, it's going to keep your interest so you're not bored by it. And it allows you not only that practice time to get better, to look at different light angles, to um, play with different types of media. It also gives you knowledge of what works and what doesn't. So for me, I, like I say, I do a lot of mixed media art. I would play around with um, paints one day and collage the next, and then I would see what happened with the two of them. And I found that I learned so much from that practice. So the practice point is the time you're setting aside, but it is a practical exercise. Now, finally, we're going to look at playing. Now, I'm talking here about embracing your inner child. So leave the expectations at the door. No stress, no worries, just play. And whatever takes your fancy, don't be afraid to have those experimentations. Um, like... See what works for you. See what doesn't work for you. You might decide, actually, you're going to try crochet. I don't like crochet. I can't crochet to save my life. But I know so many people who find it relaxing. I didn't. That's okay. I moved on to something else. It's how it worked for me. And in this day and age, you don't need to go out and buy all the kit. Your creativity doesn't need to be expensive. There are so many groups out there. Literally, five minutes on Facebook, and you can find groups in your area that do the type of creativity you're looking for. So like writers groups, book groups, um, crochet groups, knitting groups, you know, there's the WI for cooking, that kind of thing. And you can try those creative outlets without having to make that investment up front. So you can decide whether you like it enough to invest or not, as the case may be. Everyone likes to share their creativity and what they enjoy. So if you go to a knitting circle, you will find women who will willingly show you and teach you how to knit. Or men, as the case may well be. You know, in this generation, it doesn't matter. But you'll find that some activities just piss you off and you don't want to do them anymore. That's okay. You know, you just move on to something else. You will find something that works for you. I mean, most of us have an inkling of what we enjoy. And if you don't, if you just sit there binge watching Netflix, you're never going to find out. So go out there and play. And this comes back to what I said right at the beginning about the process of creativity. If you watch your kids messing around with paint, they're not creating something straight off the bat. They're not going, oh my God, I'm going to draw this picture perfect garden. It's going to be so picturesque. I'm going to use all these colors, this orange and green. No, they've got their fingers in, they're moving the paint around. They're just creating for the joy of the process. And that's what playing is all about, creating for the joy of the process rather than worrying about the end result. If, for me, if the end result is rubbish, well, it's paper at the end of the day. Some of the papers I use, yes, it's expensive. Yes, there are expensive products in there, but I've always learned something, whether it's what to do, what not to do, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. And I wouldn't know that without the playtime. So we are going to wrap up here. I've got a couple more words on the subject um, and I want to just quickly recap. So we've looked at, I've just completely blanked there. <laughs> we have looked at perfectionism and why it's important to let go of that. Procrastination, getting to the root of your procrastination and giving yourself permission. So three 
things that can really block us mentally from getting creative. And on the more practical side, we've got practice and play. Take some time out, put it in your diary and enjoy it. So have fun and enjoy the process. That really is my kind of big takeaway for you. You know, if you're going to spend all that time focusing on this end product, you're not necessarily going to enjoy things so much and you'll get too caught up in perfectionism that starts to stunt your creativity and then you start the cycle all over again. So have fun, enjoy the process. And finally, start somewhere. You know, I can't do it for you. You're the one who has to sit down and go for it. So take a deep breath. Don't worry whether it's right or wrong, good or bad. Just go for it. And, you know, have fun. So if you enjoyed my five P's to creativity and want to see some more, you can get what I'm deeming the Creative Activation Playbook, which gives you support and inspiration to germinate and nurture your creativity. You can get that for free at www.inkypawsart.com. Um, it's at the bottom of most of the pages, most of the blog posts. Um, so sign up to the mailing list and you'll get that. It's a, I believe it's like an eight page, yeah, eight pages in this playbook. And it really helps you get to the bottom of moving forward and getting inspired and getting motivated and going for it. Um, there's some audios in there, there's exercises, and it's up to you how you use it. So I would love to see you across there. And yeah, that's it from me. So have fun and enjoy the process.